Friday evening edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. For the 6 o'clock news this evening, they sent me down to uh, Salem to uh, talk about the Salem Super Cruise and do the weather outside where it was beautiful. It was not that humid at all. Dew points in the 40s, temperatures in the lower 70s. Here's a look at the last 36 hours worth of observations at the Youngstown Warren Airport. Yesterday, we struggled to hit 70. Now, today was a little bit better, but still a little cooler than average. Our average is about 78, but we stopped in the mid-70s, around 75. Not only at the airport, but in most backyards this afternoon, but uh, the dew points, bone dry for the summer season. Dew points settling into the 40s. That is delicious stuff for this time of the year. As we get into meteorological summer, June, July, August, it gets more and more uncommon for you to have dew points settling into the 40s. So enjoy this air mass while we have it. Notice the dew points are building out to our west. Very humid air mass from Dallas to Omaha over to St. Louis. This is the air mass that is going to come east, and we'll notice the change by Sunday. It's going to be a lot muggier outside as we wrap up the, the uh, upcoming weekend. All right, most of the action weather-wise is off to our south and west this evening. Actually, the weather pretty quiet nationwide with no big severe weather threats out there this evening. Still a small severe thunderstorm watch down towards the mouth of the Mississippi and Louisiana. A couple of showers here and there across parts of the uh, lower Ohio Valley. A little bit closer to home, we uh, will keep an eye on... One little cluster of showers with a little bit of thunder out across uh, parts of Lake Erie tonight and over towards Detroit. I can't rule out a passing shower here overnight, but I don't think it's much at all. Here's our high-resolution model. This is probably overdone even, but could there be a renegade shower or two late tonight and first thing on Saturday morning? That's a possibility, but I wouldn't worry too much about wet weather on Saturday. Quick look at the weekend forecast. 76 on Saturday. The dew point's still pretty low on Saturday. Sunday's a different deal, though. The dew points come up big time into the 60s. The air mass starts to warm. We've got a pretty potent <coughs> pardon me, potent uh, disturbance heading our way, and we'll get a couple of waves of moisture. One first thing in the morning. Some showers pretty likely very early Sunday. And then we'll probably see a prolonged break for a lot of the midday hours before thunderstorms become a possibility, even a likelihood, as we get into the afternoon. So again, Saturday's a nice day. This is the day to spend outdoors if you had to pick one day this weekend. I think a lot of us are going to get wet right around daybreak or just before daybreak on Sunday, and then we'll dry things out for a while. Now, this forecast for Sunday afternoon is a tricky one. This morning, one of our models, the NAM model, NAM North American model, came in really hot and had a severe weather outbreak like we haven't seen in a while across the region, or at least that possibility. That was this morning's run of the NAM, but it was kind of on its own. Um, not other modeling was as enthusiastic. Not all the modeling was as, as, as enthusiastic, I should say, um, as the NAM was this morning. This afternoon's run of the NAM, much less coverage with uh, showers and storms. Other modeling going along with that idea, including the latest run of, uh, we call this our in-house model. It's called the GRAF, G-R-A-F. Um, it is basically run by IBM, and uh, it has a scattering of stuff popping around in south of I-70, but hardly anything around here late in the afternoon on Sunday. So this is still a fluid situation. What I can tell you about Sunday is we may not have thunderstorms in the afternoon, but if we do, they could be pretty strong. We've got a lot of ingredients in place on Sunday for severe weather if these storms were to form over our area and not just to our south. Now, if we do get rain Sunday afternoon, I think that increases the chances of fog Monday morning. Otherwise, pretty quiet start to next week, and this will be the coolest day of the week on Monday because we've got some big-time heat coming our way. So here's what I've done with the severe weather risk map um, for Sunday. Um, the red color uh, where severe weather at this point is more likely. I've shifted this somewhat to the south. It's interesting. You look at the day three outlook from the, climate, or the uh, Storm Prediction Center. They don't even have us in the low end marginal risk. Um, I think this is going to change tonight when this becomes the day two outlook, but when they issue the day three outlook at two o'clock this morning, they have us in just kind of the general thunderstorm area, very low risk of severe weather. I think tonight you'll see them rearrange some of these areas, and I guess I wouldn't be surprised if we're on the northern fringes of at least a low risk, and they might even draw a slight risk area somewhere in here, just depending on what the models uh, start spitting out this evening. Again, this is kind of a fluid situation. The models are not, you know, handling um, the placement of these features all that well. So we're seeing a lot of back and forth in some of the modeling information, and that uh, certainly is not a big help to us. So as it stands now, again, if thunderstorms were to form in our area Sunday afternoon, number one risk would be damaging winds, but with the kind of wind shear that we have overhead, 
Um, I don't want to discount the possibility of isolated tornadic activity. Again, this could be just nothing. Or if storms get going, they could really mean some business. So I don't want to discount at all the possibility of uh, some problems across our area. Here's the latest run of the European model showing the significant tornado parameter. We're not looking for big numbers here. This parameter, the numbers are always small. Once we get up to 0.5 and especially up to 1, that really gets our attention. Well, the latest run of the Euro, you know, keeps the risk to our south, and even those numbers are not very high. So, again, just one run of one model, but there's been a trend this afternoon of the model, is, the model, uh, the model information poo-pooing our risk a little bit for the second half of Sunday. Once we get beyond Sunday and this potentially elevated risk, quiet day Monday, midweek, the heat is the story, but I think with this ridge cresting just off to our west. We're going to be on the kind of the fringes. We might have some what we call ridge runner thunderstorms or ring of fire thunderstorms that like to form along the kind of periphery of a heat dome. And so we might be dealing with a couple of gusty thunderstorms at times during midweek. Boy, it's going to be hot. I mean, dew points are not much of a story through uh, Saturday. They'll be elevated Sunday, come back down somewhat Monday. But Tuesday and Wednesday, our dew points might hover in the upper 60s to around 70. And with temperatures around 90 Wednesday, That'll create heat index values in the upper 90s, and Thursday's temperatures and heat index values may not be much better. I do think that a cooling trend will commence as we head towards Father's Day weekend next weekend. But yeah, this will be the most uncomfortable, most stifling weather of the year so far. Coming our way during midweek, it may come with some occasional thunderstorms. Sunday situation? Stay tuned. We're going to be keeping you updated throughout the evening on social media on the Storm Tracker 21 app throughout the weekend. Make sure you're following all of our team, including my accounts right here on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube as well. In the meantime, have a great rest of your Friday night and a good weekend as well.